Valentine's Day. Valentine was a very popular name, and there are several stories of Saint Valentinian martyrdom. Do I really have to wear this? In a letter to her, love your Valentine. Apparently, they were both beheaded on February 14th. I get it. It's Valentine's, it's our anniversary. But what, what is this? What is this? Christianized the sexy holiday, which included spanking women with goat skin to promote fertility in the country. Huh? Oh, I won't do that. What's up guys, my name is JC, I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subans a la suburban, let's take a ride with Cupid. <laughs> it is Valentine's weekend. I have to say that I was, I was thinking about what should I do for for this channel for Valentine's weekend and I I have to self re reflect on my whole life because today's my me and my wife's anniversary and you know I've I've become a better man today than I was yesterday when I first you know met her and I and I say that because uh, I'll keep it real, you know, I was a womanizer. I um, I used women for whatever I could. Uh, sex, a place to stay, uh, drugs. Um, I mean, half of the time I, I was trying to prove to myself that I was, you know, a player, that I was, uh, that I could get girls and, and kind of like, you know, tell my buddies, hey, look at me, you know, and I had to really sit back and reflect on my life of the decisions I was making when I started to like get on this journey of you know wrong to strong you know becoming a better version of myself and one of the biggest things that I had to fix was my my sex addiction and being being a dog you know um, I'm actually working on a book that's called walking the dog and it, it talks about how my my whole life I tried to prove to myself that I was this player, that I was this this person that could get women, you know, sleep with them, use them, uh, abuse them, and I, I came to to realize that, you know, I was the piece of shit. You know, I was the one doing all these things, and. You know, I really ne never really thought that I was going to actually be faithful to one woman and 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 not think about cheating and not think about uh, being with other women. I really thought that that was normal and that that was my life and I was very, very wrong. I was very, very wrong. I was the one that was sick inside and, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with a lot of the stuff that happened to me as a kid, you know. Um, if you guys have followed my story in the past, uh, I, I was molested by by my mom's brother for for many years, and at the same time, I guess I was trying to prove to myself that I was a, a man, that I wasn't, you know, gay. Uh, second, I kind of had, uh, I guess, hard feelings for my mom for like putting us in that situation. So I, I was kind of like getting even kind of like with with two people at the same time but you know it's like that saying goes you know you're you're over here drinking poison trying to you know wishing that that other person dies and the one that's getting sick and is dying is, is you because you know I was carrying around all this all this pain for a long time and you know I I have I have five kids I have five babies with uh, different baby moms and some of my kids talk to me, some of them don't, um, you know, and, and the baby moms, you know, I, some of them I have relationship with, some of them I don't. I'm still trying to, you know, fix all the damage that I did throughout the years of me, you know, being a drug addict, a, a gang member, a, a drug dealer, all these things that, you know, in my head, 
I guess you could call it to a certain point kind of machista. I was thinking about me, me, me only, you know, uh, I could do all these things, not thinking about other people's, you know, feelings and emotions and how I hurt them. And, you know, it, it must have been hard to, like, uh, been with me and then saw me be with somebody else and, and you know, raising their kids instead of raising mine. And, like, I, I was actually becoming the one thing that I hated the most, and that was my dad. You know, I don't hate my dad. You know, today I, I forgave him, but I forgave him for me, not for nobody else. He's still, you know, he's still my dad. He's still, he's still doing his thing. He's, he's, I look at him now and I, I realize that some people just never change. You know, uh, he's married again. He has, I guess this is like his 15th, you know, relationship, wife, whatever you want to call it. I, I am like the record holder of, you know, stepmoms. And I, I hated him so much for doing that to us because he abandoned us, didn't raise us. He tried, but he would throw in the town, would rather raise other kids, other kids from other relationships he was with. And throughout the years, I just started hating him and hating him more. And throughout the years, I didn't realize that I was actually turning into him. So, and he's done everything, you know, he's done the, the in the AA in the AA world they look at him like he's God because he's he's been sober for like forty something years so they they call him to all these big meetings and he speaks and tells you know his story and that's that that feeling that you get of being like like a god they talk about it in, in AA actually and this is why when you go to, to meetings you're you're going there to self reflect and help yourself that's how how you you stay sober it's not that you're there to tell a, a better story than the last person and i suffered more and i was on the street no 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 you're there for you just like when you go to service you're there to listen to the message for you you're not there for the pastor you're not there for oh i don't like that guy i'm not gonna go no you're there for for the message and you have to really really self-reflect on what is being told to you and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't judge him. I don't hate him. I don't dislike him. I still call him once in a while. And I'm like, hey, dad, what's up? You know, I say hi. And does does it affect me sometimes that I wish I could have a relationship with my father? Yeah, it does. But I don't, I don't think that he knows how to be a father. He never was. And I, I see it now because with me, like I, I didn't know how to give my daughter's affection without getting mad or without like losing my temper and stuff like that and because of that you know some of my daughters have have stopped talking to me um my oldest one julia she lived with me for a little bit and she would be out you know partying coming home really late drinking smoking weed and i i snapped on her because i was like this ain't no fucking hotel blah 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 and she stopped talking to me but I, I failed to realize that that was me doing all that shit, you know, and I didn't, I didn't understand her. I didn't meet her halfway, and, you know, now I'm paying for that, you know, and it, it's, been, it's been a hard road, man. And I wanted to talk about it just because, you know, Valentine Days is coming up, and, you know, behind a great man, there's, there's a greater woman, and I strongly, strongly believe, believe that because... When I met my wife, she she changed my my whole life around everything. Um, I, I believe that if I would have wouldn't have met her, not that I wouldn't have finished my probation, but I would have got into a couple of stumbles and and got into a, tr a little bit of trouble here and there because I was still kind of doing stuff I wouldn't I wasn't supposed to be doing. I was still kind of you know, lying to myself. I, I was pretending to be good just because I wasn't out there trying to kill people or, or sell drugs. You know, I, I was okay. But, you know, you're not supposed to drive without a license. You're not supposed to drink and drive. You're, there's a lot of things you're not supposed to do because you could end up in, in jail. And 
when I met my wife, she kind of like set me straight on a lot of things because she kept it really real with me. She just told me straight up. And, and the best part that started to help me change everything about myself was that I, had, I didn't have to pretend to be nobody. In a lot of relationships that I, that I was in, I had to pretend to be somebody else that I wasn't. And with her, I'm just me. You know, I'm just this big ass kid that went to prison at a really young age and really didn't experience a lot of things as a kid, you know, no prom, no friends from like, <laughs> from like childhood, no, a lot of things that like, I'm a big ass kid. I laugh and I joke about stuff and I sometimes wanna watch cartoons, sometimes I wanna watch, you know, stupid shit and, and I, sometimes the way I speak is not, it's not proper, it's not, it's not the way you're supposed to speak and you know, she's, she's okay with that and she's actually helped me you know, she corrects me when I'm when I'm saying stuff the wrong way because I have a speech problem. You know, I was dyslexic for a very long time and, and the teachers always made me feel stupid. <laughs> so, you know, she she has done a lot in my life to to make me a better man. At the end of the day, you do it for you. You don't do it for nobody else. You don't do it for a woman, you don't do it for your family, you don't do it for your kids, you do it for you. Because as a man, you want to walk with your chest out and your head high. You don't want to be embarrassed about nothing. And remember, like, the truth always comes out. Always. And when you're juggling two phones because you're cheating or, or you lied about this thing because of that, like, when you have to completely play football with your relationship, with your life, everything, it is, it's not, something's not right. And, you know, I, I, I look at Valentine's Day, not, not like to go out and buy something, diamond earrings, not, nothing like that. It's a reminder of how much you love your, your significant other, your partner, your friend, your, your ride or die, like all those things, man. And as we go on this journey, this wrong, strong journey, you know, uh, it, it's, it's going to come together, man, you know, with the books and, and and just everything that I want to do to to show people that it doesn't matter if you've made bad decisions or, or choices. I mean, that's the past. It's it's done. What matters is what you do from this day on. When you get up and dust yourself off and move on. If you were out there being a dog, you, you could change. If you did prison time, guess what? You could come out and change. There's there's so many things that can be done and that must be done. I feel at the end of the day, you want to respect yourself, respect your wife, your girlfriend, your partner, whoever it is that you're dating, and don't take advantage of people because at the end of the day, being a humble, a good, respectful person is free. Hey, my name is Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Give somebody a hug. Live savage and remember, you only have one life to live, bro. Live it out here in peace and harmony, getting better every day, and just live life to the fullest, man. You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I'll catch you guys in the rebound.